the majestic Brihadeshwara Temple. Staggering and indicative of the opulence of the times it was built in. Where lies the mystery of an agricultural flatland with no mountains, seeing a mammoth 130,000 ton granite structure built on it in guess what, a mere six year period. A period when no cranes, drones or sophisticated construction technology existed. Such was the perseverance of our ancestors who made the impossible possible. I'm on a six-day tour organized by the Isha Sacred Walks along with 80 others. Do check out the previous two parts of this series to know more about this journey. Today is day four and we had started early from Trichy. <coughs> My sound has gone off a little bit. We're starting off at seven o'clock and the plan today is to go to Tanjaur and then to Rameshwaram. I'm still feeling that uh, sense of you know, uh, gratitude for having been able to experience yesterday's temple, Jambukeshwar temple. It was the experience, the divinity, the vibrancy that uh, I think I felt and I think a, a lot of others also felt there it was uh, unmatched uh, to a very large extent. Looking forward to today's journey, let's see how it goes. We are going to be taken around the temple by a guide. Good morning, my name is Selvam, retired teacher as well as guide. This is otherwise called a temple city. Let's see the history of Tanjavu. We have the available record from 6th century onward. Starting with the Cholas, there are many kingdoms which have contributed to the upkeep of this temple through the centuries until the British annexed it post mid 1800s. Sanskrit Brahadeswaran, actual name Raja Rajeswaram. Why? Because this one was built by Raja Raja Chol Maharaj. The great Rajaraja Cholan is said to have built the big temple to wash off the sins accumulated by him and his troops during their various victorious battles. It is also considered a thanksgiving to his favourite deity, Lord Shiva, when he triumphed the Elam or the Sri Lankan island and became its ruler. The king apparently wanted the temple to look like the Meru mountains and hence it is also known as the Dekshina Meru or the South Meru. So in 1003 AD, how did 130,000 tons of granite get here, you ask? Apparently, from a village named Pudukote, 60 km south of Tanjavur. There are differing accounts on the number of animals used. The most cited are 3,000 elephants, 500 horses and even some buffaloes. And as Selvamji says, it was brought little by little and little by little. Imagine the resilience. Yeah, Lord Shiva getting married to Parvati. Vishnu giving away her sister to Lord Shiva. Vishnu. Broken part Brahma. Brahma for broken. The Gandharva. Celestial beings. These are the Buddha Ganas. So these huge murtis or statues are 18 feet tall and are made of a single stone. They are the Dwarpaluk or the security gods of the temple. As we proceed into the temple, this architectural marvel leaves one absolutely awestruck. Please, please come this way, sir. Please. Madam, Amrila, Madam. Amrila, Madam. Amrila, Madam. Shiva Temple, Agama Sastra, according to Agama, A G A M A. Agama text tells about the rituals and construction of the temple. How to do puja? How to construct the temple? Is the text of Agama, according to Agama Sastra. Ulta Kamalam, Inverter Lotus. Balibiram, sacrificing place, not animal, not animal, ego, everyone has an ego, even LKG students are having ego, we have to sacrifice ego, go with pure heart, that is the representation. The first full granite temple ever, everyone's ego certainly vanishes the moment they enter here seeing the brilliance of our ancient minds. Nandi, not an animal, it looks like an animal, Jivatma, human spirit, inside God, Paramatma, universal spirit, both unite, this place we call it as temple. What is temple if you ask me? Temple is the place where Jivatma and Paramatma unite. The Nandi is made of one stone, 25 tons weight, 12 feet high. This one was constructed by the Noya king, not by Chola. You may ask, this is Chola temple, what about Chola Nandi? White color, small Nandi, backside, look there. He installed a new one. This is not to show his power. This is not because one. First because Lepache, Andhra Pradesh. Tanjavur second, third Mysore, fourth Bengaluru. 
The Vimana or the main tower stands at 216 feet making it among the tallest in the world. It sports an amazing 81 ton kumbham or the capstone made of a single piece of granite. Imagine the effort that would have taken to carry it up that height in those days. Throughout the world, very big lingam in the world. So first lingam stab it stays. Next to build the Vimana. Lingam is a Sanskrit word, two words. Ling. Gam. Ling means involution. Evolution and evolution. Despite its height, the Vimana does not cast a shadow at noon 365 days of the year. And another fascinating fact is that it has survived six recorded earthquakes from 1807 to 1900. Arvadi Temple, Brahman Nayagi, another name, the nine feet statue. This is called the Tanjavur painting, 18th century Maratha painting, natural painting by using leaves, flowers, and vegetables, not by chemical. This is Vijayanagara architecture. This is Maratha and this is Chola. The first line here start and the end at the end. The inscriptions are apparently in old Tamil and talks about how the kingdom should be run and how the temple was built. The belief is the consecration of the temple uh, was not completed and later on the son of Raj Raja Chola he ended up building an, another temple which is of almost the same opulence but smaller in size uh, nearby. As we come out my feelings are mixed that of overwhelm, disbelief and a desire to come back and explore this timeless marvel and its city more. The temple certainly caught the fancy of my fellow commuters too. The magnificent architecture, it's always been the Tanjavur Tower. Phenomenal. So I think that's why the experience was a little different because yeah. more like a guided tour. But it was a fantastic experience. Favorite temple? This trip? Honestly, it has to be Tanjavur. We are back on the road again and we had a wonderful surprise waiting for us at Karekudi. A mouth-watering, traditional, homemade lunch made for just a bunch of us. Very, very sumptuous meal in this house. Uh, they gave a full spread, Karekudi food, extremely delicious. The special lunch we had, um, Karekudi. Karekudi, that uh, old uh, system was there and on the inside the house and everything. Very nice. Very nice and uh, oh, authentic nice. and South Indian meal was uh, served to us and yeah, it was very homely and uh, a different experience. The smiling faces of unconditional service. These are Isha followers who have opened their house for strangers. As we move on to our next destination, I am continued to be amazed by the planning and execution of this entire trip by the volunteers. Do subscribe and like if you do like this video. Our next stop is the southernmost Jyotirlinga. I hope you'll continue with me in this journey.